Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. This tutorial video is actually a answer to a question we got from one of our subscribers uh, named Sonny Real Jr. Uh, so he asked the question of how to rename CSV files based on the content in them, and then gave a little example of what his data looked like and what the naming convention should be. So that's actually the example that we're gonna be using today. Uh, a little bit different just because uh, some of the data I didn't exactly have access to, but I tried to recreate the scenario as close as possible for him uh, so we can help him out and rename those, those files, whether they're CSV files or any type of data file. We're going to be working with CSV files. So I actually have two CSV files here, um, which just contain an invoice number a doc type, which he actually gave me the reference for what doc type is equal to what, uh, a date field, uh, tax info, company code, and time. And then this is the example data um, that we were given here. So this is the invoice number, which is just one. We have a doc type, which is zero one. We have the date, uh, which for now, we just have it set as July 3rd, 2023. The tax info, the company code, and then the time, which this is in military time, but this would be uh, 141 and then zero milliseconds. And then I just went ahead and created a second data file here, uh, with again, just made up data, changing the company code, adding in some different times, and also adding a different doc type in here, which won't really affect our result, but we can actually see if we do change this uh, last one here and see the different things. So he did give us also this reference file here, which gives us the different doc types. Uh, so you mentioned that the doc type 01 means regular, uh, 02 SI, 03 return, 04 is avoid. So we have all these doc types here. So what we wanna do is we wanna rename these files that are in this folder. We wanna give them the name based on the content that's in there. This way, you know, it might be a lot easier to sort through and know what file you actually want to open, um, especially if you just have a bunch of data that kind of has some not so obvious names. He had mentioned that he had used the CSV splitter uh, function that we created quite a while back to split all the files. And now he wants to rename all the files so he could properly find stuff. So let's go ahead and let's start writing that script here. So what we first want to do before we actually do anything with the actual files is we want to load up the doc type reference so we can actually look up what type of doc type it is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable here for the doc type lookup file path. So I'm just going to do a doc type lookup file path here. And we're going to make that equal to a pair of double quotes and we're just going to copy paste the file path here in there. And then what I just like to do is then create another variable, another variable called doc type. And we are gonna do doc type lookup. And that will equal the import CSV. And our path is gonna be the doc type lookup file path. And the reason why I did this through a CSV file and an import CSV, you can also do this uh, with databases as well. It would just require a little bit more of a uh, setup time of setting up those tables, setting up the SQL queries inside of your PowerShell uh, code. Uh, but the reason why I did this instead of a switch statement is just if we ever have new doc types, we can simply add them to the file or add them to the database instead of coming into the code, going into the switch statement and doing it that way. Um, but a switch statement is definitely fully valid if you just want to do a lookup based on doc type as well. Uh, that's just a little reference of why I'm doing it through a lookup file. All right, and then the next thing that we need is, of course, all of our different files that we want to rename. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable called um, file folder path and we're going to make that equal to a set of double quotes and once again we're just going to copy the path of the file folder here and then we're going to create a variable called files and we're going to make that equal to get child item path 
and we are going to point that to our file folder path. Now, if you do have like subfolders or anything like that, that you would also like to rename those files, uh, you would probably want to do a recurse on that as well. And also, if you do have any other types of files in there, maybe you have, as an example, let's go ahead and let's just add one in here, a test.txt file here, which won't have anything in there. But let's say you only want to rename the CSV files that are in there. Make sure that you do a filter and then in the filter, do a set of double quotes and then star dot CSV. And if we actually just run this here and then just run this little bit of code, we should only get the two CSV files back and that will exclude anything that is not a dot CSV. So that is something to keep in mind. If you know that they're all CSVs, you don't need to include this filter, but if you're unsure, it is a good procedure to just put that in there. All right, and then the next thing we wanna do is actually just change this to files. And then we're gonna have a for each statement. So for each file in files, then we're gonna have an open and closing curly bracket. And this is really where the script actually starts. So what we actually wanna do is, I wanna grab the last line of the table and use that as my reference for the name. Um, just because in some of his explanations, uh, the last number that we want for our name is the number of transactions. So that will be the invoice number. Uh, so we just want to keep that. Um, so if I grab the last one, we'll always know what number is the last one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get that data. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna create a variable called file data. And we're gonna make that equal to import CSV dash path file dot full name. It's very important to put that dot full name in there and not just file because that might create some issues for you. As always, I do like to put the delimiter. So we're just gonna put that as a comma here. And then all I like to do, you can do this in one line um, but I like to split it up just to make it a little bit more readable. We're going to create one called last line. And we're going to make that equal to the file data. And we're going to pipe that to select dash object. And then a parameter called last and then one. And that will select the last object from that CSV file. So now if we actually go ahead and we run this here, let's just output the last line of our files and let's see what it looks like. So there it is. We get our info as we expected, which is the last line of our two files. So now what we can do is we can actually associate the doc type. So what we can do here is create a variable called doc type. And we're going to make that equal to our doc type lookup. And we're going to pipe that to where object. And in our doc type lookup, what we have is we have a column called doc type and a column called name. So we want to match it on the doc type and we want to get the actual name. So where object doc type is equal to the last line dot doc type. So if we actually do that here, we just look that up. We will actually get back the doc type one and the name regular. So what you can actually do here as well is you can just wrap this in a set of parentheses and then do a dot name. And now if we execute this, we will only get the name coming back, which is just regular. So that is perfect. And then what we can do is create a variable for our new name. And let's go ahead and let's create that new name based on some of the requirements that he gave us. So the first part of the file name is going to be the company code. So let's go ahead and in the double quotes, we're just going to make a variable wrapper. And we're going to go ahead and put last line dot company code. It's going to be an underscore and then another variable wrapper. And then they wanted the date. So let's go ahead and let's do the last line dot date because it's the date of the transaction that he wants, uh, which is actually in the file here. We do have the date. So we're just going to put that in there. And then underscore. And then we are going to do another variable wrapper. 
and then they wanted the time, uh, but they wanted a specific version of the time. So last line, um, we need to put the dollar sign here, last line dot time. Now, the thing about the time is they only want the hours and the minutes in the following. They don't want the actual number of seconds. And as we can see here in the data, we have seconds. So what we would actually want to do here is dot time dot substring. And to get the hours and the minutes uh, instead of the seconds is we need to start at index zero, which is going to be the beginning. And we want to go over four, four positions over. So when we do the substring, we want to start at zero, and then we're going to put a comma and then four, which will tell it to go four positions next to it. So if we actually just go ahead and just run this little bit of code here, just this little substring, we should see 1359, which comes from right here, which is perfect. All right, so once we have that time, the next value we need is the doc type and then the invoice number or the transaction amount. So let's go ahead and let's go underscore and let's do a variable wrapper and let's do the last line dot uh, or actually this won't be coming from the last line. This will be coming directly from our doc type variable. And then we're going to have an underscore and then we're going to have another variable wrapper and we're going to have the last line dot invoice number. Now there is one thing that I do want to mention about the last line dot invoice number, which we're just going to see that in just a few moments here. So let's go ahead and let's now rename the file. So if we rename the item here, the path we want to rename is going to be the file dot full name. And the new name is we're just going to supply the new name variable. And if we go ahead and we run this, we will see that it does rename our files appropriately. As you can see, this one got named to 3210 and then the date of July 3rd, 5, 4, uh, 1359, which is the last number here, regular, and then 004. Now, the only thing that will happen here is let's say the invoice number does change. And we have an invoice number here, which is 99. And let's just do a doc type of two here just to change it up a little bit. We're going to change the time as well. And let's just rename these to data. Data2.csv. And let's rename this one to data1.csv. Now, if we rename the data2, our number of transactions is going to make it seem like we have 99 transactions this way. So the thing that I would probably do instead of invoice number is I would then use, instead of last line, is you can actually look at the number of items that you have imported. So this will be file data dot count. Now, of course, if you want to append zeros, if you want to always make sure that it's got a four character, uh, we can see that as well. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and run this real quick. And let's see what happens here now. So now if we rename it, we will see that we got one because it just has one entry and here it is five because we only have five entries even though the last invoice number is 99 so that actually works out really really good and now let's say we actually want to add all those zeros here so let's actually go ahead and let's do that here so let's go back to our script here where we actually have our dot count now what you don't have when you're dealing with integers is a handy dandy little function for adding left or right. So what we're going to do here with our file data dot count, what we can actually do is add a set of square brackets in front of that and put the word string in there and then wrap the whole string file data dot count in parentheses and then do a dot 
and then we're able to do a dot pad left. And what we always want to make sure is we always want to make sure that it is a four digit number. And we are going to add a zero in front of it. Make sure that your zero is in quotations, whether that is double quotes or single quotes, it won't actually matter. And then what we can do is let's go ahead. Let's just rename these for fun here. Let's go ahead. Data.2.csv and data1.csv. And let's go ahead and let's run this here. And there we have it. So the first file here, we have 3441, which is the company code. We have the date, we have the time, we have the regular, and then we have 001, which is just one transaction. And then for this one, where we actually have five transaction, even though the last number is the last invoice number is 99, we still have the proper amount of transaction numbers. And we actually have the company code, which is 3210. We have the date and we have the time of that last transaction. So hopefully this answers the questions that you had, Sunny. If you have any other questions or want some clarifications on this, uh, please let me know in the comment section or through email, and I can definitely be glad to help you out with that as well. If any of you guys have any other questions with PowerShell or any other um, programming type questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will be glad to create more of these videos to help you guys out. because I do believe that renaming files based on content uh, is definitely something that maybe a lot of people do need to do for work. Um, or maybe even in their personal lives to help just organize their files a little bit better. Hopefully this guys help this help you guys out a little bit more. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.